game dev journey. 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 There is another way to do input. And this came out with Godot 3.5. So I'm going to show that to you, um, just so that you know. So we can create another function here called get input two. And the way this one works is just like we had a variable for velocity in our original get input function, we could have a velocity variable again, but let's call this one direction. So let's call this variable direction and it equals a vector two and we'll just zero it out. So it's vector two and it's, it's zero, zero at the moment. Then what we'll do is we'll get the, the x direction. So direction dot x will be equal to input dot get access. Right. So this new method is called get access. And now we want the negative direction, the negative x direction first, which is left, and then the positive x direction, which is right. So here you can actually see how the method works. It is called get access, and it needs the negative action and the positive action. So that will, that will get us the direction on the horizontal. Now we need to get the direction on the vertical, so direction.y, and it'll be the same thing, input.getAxis, and now we need the negative direction, which is up, and we need the positive direction, which is down. Now that we have the direction, we can normalize, we can normalize it to get rid of the increase in speed when you go in the diagonal. So now we can say if direction dot length is greater than zero. So if we are moving in a direction, space there to make it easier to read. If we are moving in a direction, then we're going to normalize the uh, the vector in that direction. So we'll say direction now equals direction dot normalized. And then after that, we can just do as we had previously, we can set our velocity equal to our direction multiplied by our speed because our direction now has been normalized. So that's the new way and perhaps the preferred way now to get input for a character moving on the X and Y axis. All right, notice here that we multiply velocity by delta. So let's talk a little bit about delta because the process function includes a parameter called delta that is then multiplied by the velocity as I've said. So what is delta? Well, Godot, our game engine, attempts to run a consistent 60 frames per second. However, this can change due to a number of factors, computer slowdowns, either in Godot or from the computer hardware itself. So if that frame rate is not consistent, then it will affect the movement of all of your game objects. For example, think about an object that's set to move at 10 pixels every frame. If everything is running smoothly, this will translate to moving 600 pixels in one second because we're doing 60 FPS. But if some of those frames take a little longer, then there may only have been 50 frames in that second. So the object would only have moved 500 pixels in that frame. So Godot, like most game engines and frameworks, solves this by passing you delta which is the elapsed time since the previous frame. So most of the time, this is around 
0.016 seconds or 16 milliseconds. So if you then take your desired speed, which is say for instance 600 pixels per second, and you multiply it by delta, you'll get a movement of exactly 10. If, however, the delta increased to 0.3, then the object will be moved 18 pixels. But overall, the movement speed remains consistent and is independent of the frame rate. As a side benefit, you can express your movement in units of pixels per second rather than pixels per frame, which is much easier to visualize. And just to demonstrate that our get input to uh, function is the works the same as our get input function. I'm going to put get input to over here and run again just to test uh, that everything works the same way. And as you can see, our little pirate can run around looking for treasure. Okay. So now let's, we set up those animations earlier. So let's now choose the animations. So now that the player can move, we want to change the animations that the animated sprite is playing based on whether it's moving or standing still. So the art for the run animation faces to the right, as we can see here. And he's facing to the right, which means it should be flipped horizontally. Uh, for movement to the left. So we can do this in code because we can add the, we can use the flip underscore H property of the animated sprite to flip him around. So what we'll do is, since we're now using our get input to the preferred method over here, we'll um, add it over here. So if we are moving, Okay, so if we're moving, then we want to play the correct animation. So we'll access our animated sprite by using the dollar shortcut and choosing animated sprite. So that now lets us access the node. And we'll say, we'll access the animation property. So we'll say animation and we'll set it to our run animation, which is called run over here. You can see it. So we'll say it must play the animation called run. Now, if, if the X velocity is negative, that means we're heading towards the left and we need to flip the sprite. But if the X velocity is positive, that means we're heading to the right and we don't need to flip the sprite. So flip H only needs to be true if the velocity in the X direction is negative. So we can use a little trick here. So we can say here, dollar animated sprite right dot flip h flip the horizontal now this flipped horizontal is either true or it's false that's its value true or false it's flipped or it's not so we can make, make it equal to something that evaluates to true or false and what evaluates to true or false is is the velocity in the x direction less than zero that's either true or false so if the x velocity is less than zero if it's true it will flip horizontal if the x velocity is not less than zero if it's false then the horizontal will not be flipped okay so that's a little trick over there otherwise we will go into our animated sprite and we will set the animation to idle because we're not moving at all all right, so this, if we're moving, if the if the direction has a length greater than zero, that we, means we are moving, then we will play the run animation and we will flip the horizontal depending on the direction we're facing. If we're not moving, we will be idle. All right, so that will be our animations. Okay, and we can test this. So if we go ahead and run, we can test there. You can see we're moving left, moving right, up, down. Obviously we're not flipping on the horizontal up and down, but left and right works. And if I stop, he's idle. 
as soon as I press left to right, he runs. Brilliant.